Hey guys, finally came up. Today is uh, Wednesday, December 7th. On our uh, project, serve him more. Makes it day 341. Yeah. Um, I was just trying to think. I don't know. Today, this December 7th, I don't know what kind of. Sounds familiar. Um, my aunt's birthday was, uh, what, three days ago, I think. Her birthday was Sunday. I think I told you guys that. A lot of family members in my, almost everybody in my family that I know the birthdays is in, in uh, at least the fall and winter months. Uh, but mom's, mom's is in December. Her birthday's in December. My aunt's just in December. My uncle's is in December. Dad's is in February. Mine's in January. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, but I don't know December 7th. I don't know. They just rings a bell to me for some reason. I can't figure out what it is. So, anyway, guys, like I said, good to be here. I don't know if I said that or not. If I did, if I didn't, I do mean it. It is good to be here. Uh, I'm trying to get this bed in a little bit earlier tonight. Uh, got a little bit of snow here today. Uh, no accumulation. I think up on some higher elevations up on the mountains. Uh, somebody today said on Black Mountain, which is uh, the highest point in Kentucky, is on Black Mountain. Uh, part of Black Mountain is uh, is in Letcher County here, and part of it's in, it goes over into Harlan County. I think the highest point is in Harlan County. Matter of fact, I know it is. I've been to the highest point up, or, on, up around it on a motorcycle. So, uh, but anyway, there was a guy come across Black Mountain today, he said, that came in the shop there and bought some four-wheeler parts. And he said there was three or four inches of snow up there. And here, you know, we didn't have any, still don't have any. You know, it, it snowed around at least the second half of the day. It, it, it flurried on and off, you know, the whole day. But it was just still too wet and too warm. Uh, the ground was still too warm, so... Uh, I don't know. I, I hate seeing the snow come. I hate seeing the first snows because you know you're going to have more. But we're doing better than we was last year at this time. Last year at this time, we already, I think on, on the 1st or 2nd of December, we had a big snow. And pretty much from there throughout the rest of the, the winter, we had snow on the ground. I mean, as soon as one would melt off, we'd have another one. So we're in, what, the second week of December here, up in the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, you know, going and we still not really had any snow, so I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, so, anyway, hope you guys are doing all right tonight. Um, I was watching. I don't know if you guys notice stuff like this, like I do, but I was watching. I, I don't know if you guys have, have seen it, but the Discovery Channel has just made a new show. They're airing called Moonshiners, and I don't know. I've I've watched a little bit of it, but I think it's kind of ridiculous. Number one. You know, it's, it's basically the camera crews following these moon, guys that are moonshining in Virginia. Uh, quite a distance away from here, seem to be. It seemed like they're up around like the Lynchburg area, and a little bit south of Lynchburg, and that's about six hours away from us, five hours or six. So, uh, But they got the camera crews following the moonshiners, showing what they do. And they got camera crews following the, the ABC agents, and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, what's, I mean, doesn't nobody else get the kind of irony in that? Number one, you got these moonshiners here showing their faces, saying their names, and they may bleep their last name out, but, you know, they're sitting here showing, you know, I don't know, I just, I think it's all a big farce because, you know, if, uh, I don't know. And, and they're trying to portray them, of course, the, the moonshiners, his old backwards hillbillies. And this one, the guy that, the main guy that they're showing, his name's Tim, uh, you can tell that he's trying to put on this hillbilly, this, you know, this real, you know, big hillbilly attitude where all he wears is, uh, is, uh, what do you even call him? I can't even remember the name of him. Uh, uh, I keep wanting to say long handles. I hate long handles. Long handles is what I wear here. Uh, overalls, you know, the blue overalls, like the old grandpas, you know, you see, like my grandpa actually used to wear. Um, uh, wears that, you know, all the time. But you can tell by the way the guy talks. He he's he's pretty smart. Uh, he's the chief of the, the local fire department or the local uh, 
volunteer fire department where he lives. Uh, and what got me, they were, if they'll briefly show where he lives, he lives in a pretty nice place. It looks like it's a pretty, pretty new, pretty, you know, pretty good sized double wide. I mean, it's a trailer, but I guess for anywhere in these parts, you know, a, a double wide uh, kind of a mansion, but still, you know, a big double wide cost you seventy, eighty thousand dollars. It ain't no, you know, it ain't like you're living in, in a shack. But what got me, they were showing this guy, you know, they was kind of showing everything and it showed him rolling this, uh, barrel across his driveway there uh you know i guess they was just showing him take getting his supplies set up and they went kind of kind of quick they wasn't trying to hide it but as they panned across him there he had a carport set up in his uh in his driveway there and uh he drives this old daddy looking old 70 some chevrolet pickup truck but sitting under that carport in that driveway was looked like probably a 2002, 2003 BMW. Uh, looked like a 3 Series. Sitting there. And then something else. I don't remember what the other vehicle was. But I remember recognizing that BMW. You know. And I'm sure that was probably that was probably his car, his wife's car. More than likely. Uh, <clears throat> that just gets me though. That I'm, Like I said, the one premise of the show that gets me is... They're sitting there supposedly doing this illegal stuff. Well, why don't the ABCers just say, hey, camera crew, tell us where these guys are at, number one. Number two, if they couldn't do that, won't they just wait and watch them and say, okay, that's what his name, let's go get him. Uh, I don't know, it just don't make sense to me. And like I said, number two, they're trying to portray every, you know, as, as always, as most of the time when you, when you have camera crews coming into these parts of the country, they try to portray everybody as just stupid old backward ticks. Uh, and a lot of us are. I'm not gonna lie about it. A lot of a lot of us are, but not everybody. Uh, and like I said, you could you can tell with this guy, this Tim guy's his name. Like I said, you can tell you can tell by the way he talks. I mean, you can tell by the way people talk. And I'm not talking about accents or anything like that. I'm talking about if you listen to them talk, listen to the words they use, listen to them enunciate. He's a pretty smart cat. He ain't no backwards hillbilly. Billy. Uh, and like I said, he's he's got a pretty nice spread with a with a BMW sitting in the driveway. So. It ain't like he's no old uh, starving to death redneck out here making moonshine to feed his babies. Uh, <clears throat> showed him out there shooting an AR-15, you know, getting ready to go to the thing, you know. Well, number one, he's, he's shooting a thousand dollar gun there, so he's got money from somewhere. But anyway, guys, I'll get off that subject. Like I said, it's just, it irks me when they do stuff like that. There used to be a, uh, there was a show that they showed, uh, it was called Mountain Holler. It was a documentary that one of, seemed like one of the Kennedys, some of that, some of that bunch, the one of the women that was a filmmaker, uh, came down here and done. Uh, it was in Perry County, and then I think they came into Letcher County, some, uh, the county I live in, and uh, you know they was following this family. Oh, and they just, and they go right along with it, try to make yourself look like the biggest ticks. But what got me, they was talking about how poor they was. They act like they was so poor they couldn't even hardly eat and this and that. But then when they go interview this teenage boy in his room, there was a big probably thousand dollar Pioneer stereo system in the corner. A, a PlayStation, seemed like at that, that time a PlayStation was the big thing, you know, a new PlayStation sitting there. They showed them at a family reunion. And as they panned across it real quick, like I said a while ago, it wasn't something they really studied on, but they... If you would like stop the video and look real slow at this family reunion, where they had, and you could tell they parked all the vehicles out of the way where you couldn't see them, but as they panned across all these vehicles sitting there, if you kind of paused it and looked slow through it, you know there was uh, new Jeep Grand Cherokees and new Lincolns and uh, you know diesel pickup trucks and you know you could tell this family wasn't near as poor as what they acted like so. I don't know, that's kind of irks me, but uh, anyway, guys, let's get to the important thing tonight. That is, of course, the Word of God. I know I've jibber. I've not got to give you that much jibber jabber here in the last few videos. I figured I'd give you a little more. Milo, brother, I'm uh, good to see you making. I know you, you, yeah, I think it's been a few days since you made a video. I'm not sure about that, but I've got your video pulled up right now. We're showing you buffing the, uh, buffing the gas tank, so I'm going to watch that. Darren, uh, I, I've been. Uh, you've been you've been making more videos than I can keep up with. To be honest about it, I've been trying to watch all of them. Um, I've got one of your videos pulled up right now to watch too. So, 
Uh, I'm trying to watch everything I can. But anyway, guys, like I said, Acts chapter 21, starting in verse 25. Here we go. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication. Then Paul took them in, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him. Here they go again, stirring up the Jew, them Jews, man, I tell you, they, they got stirred up when Paul came around, didn't they? About like they did when Jesus came around. Crying out, men of Israel, help. This is a man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law in this place, and further brought Greeks also into the temple and have polluted this holy place. Those basically just saying, guys, I know it's pretty much self explanatory, but some people may not get it. They were basically just saying, hey, here's this man. He's teaching these, these things that are wrong. He's teaching that people don't need to obey the law, you know, because he was teaching that you get saved through having faith in Jesus Christ and believing in him, not the law anymore. He's saying that they're saying you don't have to you don't have to keep the law, you don't have to have respect for this place, and further brought Greeks. It says, and he's bringing Gentiles, he's bringing these dirty Gentiles into the temple, and he's polluting this place. So that's that's reason enough to kill him. Basically, is what they were trying to get to. Verse twenty nine: For they had seen before with him in the city Trophimus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. This is one of the, the Greeks they were talking about. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. So they, they, they seen that there was going to be a big uproar and there was going to be a lot of trouble. And he ran down there. That's basically where we're at to right now. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried one thing, some another. Among the multitude, just to remind you of anybody what they were doing with Jesus, one person was hollering one thing, one another. And there wasn't nothing really any of them was saying making any sense because just like Jesus, he had really done nothing wrong. And some cried one thing, some another, among the multitude. And when he and when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after, crying, away with him. Again, reminds you of anybody. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Anyway, guys, well, let's go ahead. I, 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 I'm already in a long video. Let's go ahead and finish this. Art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar and led us out of the led us out into the wilderness, four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man, which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with a hand unto the people. Excuse me, guys, I lost my place. And when there was, excuse me, and when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, and of course, it, it ends the chapter right there. So let's go to chapter 22. I don't know why they, they do this sometimes. I'll read one or two verses here, guys. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he saith. Anyway, guys, I am going to have to stop there. We're already running late. But we'll start tomorrow night, guys, in Acts chapter 22, verse 3. Like I said, I, I, I hate making these big, long videos. I know some of you, I don't know, some, most of you guys say you like them. So, uh, I like longer videos. I like watching longer videos, but I don't know. I figured that was just me, but Anyway, guys, like I said, thanks for being here tonight. I appreciate all you guys that really do. Pray for me, guys. The devil's been attacking me here lately. Uh, 
I don't know. It, well, I do know. It's it's church is you know like I said these you know uh, we've had these few people started not coming to church and I've had that on I've had that on my mind you know worrying about whether it's my fault or not uh, you know and then we've got this uh, this nativity coming up and, and like I said I, I look forward to to the to getting to serve the Lord and I look forward to the fact that hoping that it touches some people but I also dread it I mean I do I dread standing out in the cold for th three hours for three nights because that's every most everybody else is going to be in an enclosed scene with a heater in it well guess who the one person that has to stand outside and talk to people that's not going to be in heat so well there uh, there may be another person or two it's not going to be just me but I'm a cold weenie guys I'm a cold wussy I'll go ahead and admit it I, I cannot stand the cold I mean I have to wear long handles when it's 50 outside I mean I just I can't do it I can't stand the cold so I'm dreading that and I'm just you know like I said I'm, I'm worried we're not going to have enough people I'm worried we're not going to you know get everything done so but I know the Lord's going to do it. I know the Lord's going to take care of it one way or another. You know, it may not uh, be the way I think it's going to be, but the Lord will do it. So just pray for me, guys. Pray for all that. Pray for my business. Keep praying for that. And I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Good Lord willing, I'll be here tomorrow night. And I hope this don't take me all night to upload. So uh, <laughs> like I said, I love you guys. If you need anything, let me know. Good Lord willing, I will be here tomorrow night. Until I see you again, good night and God bless.